G'day traders, I'm Rich. Welcome to the Traders Outpost. Today, we're going to introduce you to a simple system using Bollinger Bands, which seeks to capitalize on the potential of price to oscillate around its average, or mean. Price rarely moves in straight lines, even in a trend, and tends to oscillate between periods of overbought and periods of oversold condition. When price takes an excursion away from the mean, when in a trend, towards higher highs or lower lows, then frequently it would revert back towards the mean and may overshoot to overbought or oversold condition. For example, in a long trend, when price reaches higher highs, it frequently reverts back into an oversold condition below its short-term mean. At this point, when price is retraced, you are ideally placed to take long trades back in the direction of the primary trend with excellent risk to reward ratios. This strategy can be applied to any liquid instrument and the trade signal operates off the open price of the bar based on market information derived from past data up to the prior close. As trade actions are determined on the open of the bar, we recommend that this strategy is applied to longer term time frames such as a daily time frame or above. The reason for this time frame preference is that we want to minimize the impact of possible slippage that may arise on the open. With the daily or weekly time frames, this impact is non-material in nature. The intent of this backtest model is to take profitable snips of long-term trends by entering these trends when price is retraced from its higher highs or lower lows and then ride the mean reversion bounce back into the direction of the primary trend. So the key features of this model comprise a simple moving average, a Bollinger Band, a count of consecutive price bars that remain in the overbought or oversold condition and act as a trade entry trigger, and the average true range which is used as a method to define recent volatility of price and accordingly scale our position size or stop condition to mitigate our trade risk exposure. The simple moving average is frequently used as a popular trend direction filter and is derived from the average close taken from a defined lookback of closing prices. When price is above the simple moving average, we are only allowed to enter long trades. When price is below the simple moving average, we can only enter short trades. A Bollinger Band is used as a statistical method to define whether price is considered overbought or oversold in relation to its recent history. John Bollinger devised his indicator in the 1980s and it applies a short-term simple moving average across a defined lookback of closing prices as a method to identify the average price or mean price, which is then plotted as the central line of the Bollinger Band. Having established the mean price, the Bollinger Band then applies standard deviation ranges around this mean to plot the dispersion of closing prices around this central value. We use the Bollinger Band in this backtest model as it provides a standardised statistical method for identifying possible retracements of price away from the direction of the primary trend. In conjunction with our use of the Bollinger Band, we define trade entry zones within the plotted Bollinger Band to determine when we consider price to be reaching overbought or oversold condition. We also use a consecutive bar count as a method to define our entry trigger. When the close price of a defined number of consecutive bars lies above or below the overbought or oversold entry zones, then we are ready to pull the trigger and enter the trade on the open of the next bar. Prior to taking an entry, we first need to calculate our desired position size. We use the average true range, or ATR, as our preferred method for position sizing and also stop or trailing stop placement. Using ATR allows us to calculate our position size per trade in accordance with current volatility. Having entered a trade with a volatility-based position sizing method, we now need to determine how to exit that trade. 
The model applies four possible methods of exit. We may apply an initial stop or a trailing stop from entry, which controls our adverse loss exposure. Or we may set profit target exits based on market condition, such as an exit when price reaches a desired percent level away from the outer lines of the Bollinger Band, or when price crosses a simple moving average. Well, hopefully that now gives you an understanding of the theory surrounding the model. So let's now drill down into the backtest model, where I can explain to you how to use it. So when you open up one of our templates, you will find seven or so tabs, also called worksheets, at the base of the screen, which you click on with your cursor to navigate around the model. The intro tab provides links to lead you to our website where you can access our blog posts and other templates and trading tools that may help you on your trading journey, a brief description of the nature of the system that the template is backtesting, links to further information about features of the model such as details regarding the indicators the model uses, and links that allow you to watch this video presentation on how to use the template. Also on the intro tab, we include a visual representation of the model that we will be testing in Excel, which will graphically portray the trade setup, entry and exit conditions, and help you understand the strategy that is being backtested using this template. Let's move to the next tab. This input tab is where you get creative and test the many variables of the strategy by changing the settings contained in the yellow cells. The possible combinations of strategy settings are vast, and on this tab, most of your time will be spent testing variables, looking for those settings that deliver more robust performance metrics. This tab includes a chart which allows you to change input settings in the yellow cells and quickly see the impact on the strategy's overall performance before you then might decide to move on to the results tab to examine the performance metrics in more detail. This therefore allows you to test various combinations while remaining on the input tab to quickly drill down to the most effective performance settings before moving on. I will now change a few inputs to show you how quickly the model crunches the data. Let's assume that you are using historical price data which you have collected from your broker and that the available data has now been loaded into the model. The cells highlighted in grey show you the date range available for testing purposes. The date range drop-down box, which you use to select the date range for analysis, uses the date supplied from your historical data. If you choose a beginning date or end date that is not a valid trading day, where you have no data supplied, then an error message may appear. But don't worry, to ensure we use valid dates from data supplied, we use the date supplied in the drop-down box to select from. To see what date ranges are available to choose from, click on the drop-down box and then press the Page Up or Page Down key or the Arrow Up or Arrow Down key to scroll through the available dates and then make your selection from the list. Let's change the date range to available dates of between, say, the 4th of January 2010 to the 17th of December 2018. The chart has now just adjusted to take into account the new date range selected, and you can quickly see the result. We might also like to see the impact of, say, taking long-only trades with this model. Or short-only trades. or allow both long and short trades. Let's now adjust the trend filter setting and apply a 50 period simple moving average setting. How about we now apply an initial stop 
to see the result. Or a trailing stop by selecting Yes to Trail and turning off the initial stop. Or let's turn off all stop conditions and use performance exits only. Let's now adjust the Take Profit targets. Let's turn off the Bollinger Band Take Profit target setting and apply the Simple Moving Average as the Take Profit setting. Notice how quickly Excel crunches the data to produce amended performance charts. You will find that this template really fast tracks your ability to hone in to more robust settings quickly and easily. Let's say that we have now tested a range of different settings and you are happy with the summary performance results produced on the performance chart. It is now time to move to the next tab, the results tab, to drill down into the performance results in more detail. The results tab comprises a more comprehensive performance chart that includes realised and unrealised equity curves, a chart of market prices over the test range period and a drawdown chart of realised equity. The inclusion of the chart of market prices allows you to quickly evaluate in what market conditions your system overperforms or underperforms. The results tab also includes important performance statistics that allows you to assess the overall performance of the strategy. You also have the ability to observe the impact of all trading costs on your strategy, such as spread, commissions, swap or holding costs, and any slippage assumptions that you might adopt. You will also notice a Take Snap button below the performance table. This is where we take a picture snap of the results tab and save the image on the Snaps tab for future reference and comparison against different strategy variations. Let's assume that we are happy with these settings and would like to keep a copy of them to compare against other strategy variations. So let's click on the Take Snap button. Now let's move to the Snaps tab to see if the performance picture was recorded. As you can see, the Results tab has been copied as an image file, which you can drag around the sheet to various locations. If we want to enlarge the image, then simply use the Zoom feature at the base of Excel to zoom in or zoom out. The image keeps a record of all the settings applied to your strategy and its performance, so you can resurrect these settings at a later date once you are happy in your final choice of settings. So let's move on. The Trades tab holds the details of all the trades undertaken by the system, which you can copy and paste into other Excel spreadsheets for further analysis if required. The remaining tabs of the model are the Data History tabs. This is where you dump your price data into the model to enable a spreadsheet to crunch the data. We currently include two separate data history tabs that hold the daily or weekly market data that you can capture from either MT4 or MT5 or Yahoo Finance. We have prepared a prior YouTube presentation, which is also available on our website, where Fred provides you with all the information on how to export your data into these tabs and apply the different data settings. The reason we provide two different tabs for data history is due to the fact that historical data from these two sources are formatted differently. While we'd recommend MT4 or MT5 and Yahoo Finance as potential data sources, provided you can configure your data to be of the same format and it includes the open, high, low or close, then you can use any data source. Well, that's a wrap guys. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and now have an understanding on how to use this backtest model. If you like what you see, 
then come on over to our shop on our website and purchase this model. Once you get into the swing of things, these Excel models are a breeze, and for those of you with limited programming skills or knowledge of the details regarding some of the more mainstream off-the-shelf backtesting systems, then testing your strategies within the Excel environment may be a cup of tea. So, if you like this video, then make sure you become a subscriber to this channel to receive further useful information about updates on our trading tools. Go on, click that subscribe button now. You can also read more about us at ATS by clicking on the website link below this presentation. Cheers guys, and remember, there's gold in them there hills. <laughs>